Fury model Leo Prime. Ooh, can't wait to transform this. What do you mean I can't transform it? It's a transformer. What do you mean I can't fuck? Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we have the Leo Prime from the Furai model line by Flame Toys. And yes, it's a transformer model kit that can't transform. Yeah, kind of a big negative. Anyways, this kit came out in January 2023, and I got this kit from Amazon, originally costing me $123.45 Canadian. But as you can see, the price unfortunately increased. This is my first Transformers kit I'm reviewing, but it's not the first one I built. The first would be the Furai model Optimus Prime, from the box, it looked like a really cool looking kit, but after having built it, I found the appearance didn't quite match up to the box images, and the build quality just fell apart over time. So you may be wondering, why did I get this kit? It's just because I thought it looked really dang cool. And I'm happy to say that it doesn't suffer from any of the problems from the earlier Furai model kits. So let's get this review started. So we got the box over here, Flame Toys, Furai model, right over here on the top left. And this box art over here looks pretty badass. As for pictures of the model kit itself, it's all actually here in the back. We got some images highlighting the R articulation with 50 movable joints, so that's gonna be pretty cool. Someone really needs to check those fonts. Also got a neutral front and back view of the kit, along with the image of all the runners. That's the box. Now let's move on to the kit itself. So here's the Leo Prime, straight build, very minimal panel lining, and I used almost all the stickers. Of which, there's not too many, however, there are some really small tiny ones where I just completely avoided. The adhesives are good, and they stick on well. In contrast with my Fiori model Optimus Prime, those stickers pretty much either are slowly peeling off, or they already came off. In addition, we got some jeweled parts with some shiny stickers behind them, which are already applied, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's pretty cool. As for build quality, I gotta say it's very easy to build. I actually highly recommend it to beginners. And you don't use any rubber polycaps, which the previous Optimus Prime suffers from, because those polycaps cracked, causing it to be very loose. In contrast, the Leo Prime is all plastic on plastic joints, making it quite solid, but a little stiff at certain areas, so just play around with it, loosen it up a bit. However, this gives the kit amazing balance, and it's able to hold poses without any issue. But I need to point out that the lion's head is pretty heavy, so the attachment does come off quite a bit. In addition, the sheath of the sword does unclip from the waist unit a lot and also disassembles itself. Though those two are very easy to attach, they do fall off frequently. And if you're wondering why I'm comparing it to the Optimus Prime, it's just because it's the same manufacturer and I like how they are improving their engineering. Aside from improving the joints, the plastic quality has definitely improved as well. Same can be said with the molding. There's a good amount of detail molded onto the first section and the use of gloss white for those parts look great. It contrasts pretty well with the red parts. They too have nice details molded onto them, and I love the combination of mechanical and organic elements. And like I said earlier, plastic quality is on point. They're rigid and durable, and don't leave too many nub marks. In addition, there's some parts that are unnegated, mostly the gold parts. Uh, if you could call it gold, that would be the biggest detriment to this kit, I guess. The gold looks very cheap, and you know me with gold, you know, it just, I like the shiny chrome gold. It just adds so much more to the kit, but you can always paint it, I guess. That would be the biggest negative for the appearance. Also, we get this cool little cloth cape thing here. It's a little annoying to put on, and it's prone to falling off if you play around with the arm too much. But it does add a unique aesthetic to the kit. It's a nice crimson velvet that has two metal rods on the side of it, allowing the cape, well I'm not sure if you actually call it a cape, but whatever, allowing it to look more dynamic. The fabric reflects the light pretty well, and it definitely looks different making the kit look even more unique. But I also ran into a really small issue where one of the threads of the cape managed to stick onto the claw unit. I resolved that, but the cape is a little damaged, hard to notice, but something you should keep in mind. Well, if you couldn't already tell, I absolutely love the appearance of the kit. It just looks badass. And with nothing else to add, let's move on to articulation. Starting with the head, it's able to 360 rotate pretty easily. The head is able to tilt up and down this far, and tilt side to side this much. Moving on to the arm, I'm just going to take away this sword right now because biggest issue, the sword does fall off a lot. The arm could perform a 360 rotation. Joints are kind of tight, but that's a good thing. Shoulder pauldron is able to move up and down. This blue piece over here is also able to rotate side to side this much. And if this was in beast mode, this would be considered its tail. It's made up of multiple sections, allowing it to be quite flexible. 
It serves no extra purpose, but it is fun to play around with. And the cape has no movement whatsoever, it just flows around. The arm is able to internally and externally rotate this far. We got a full upper bicep rotation. Stiff, but pretty good elbow bend. Forearm rotation. And the hands are a ball joint, allowing it to wiggle about. Which also causes the wrist armor to move around. On the other arm, just gonna remove the lion's head. And the red shoulder pauldron moves the exact same way as the other side. And despite the asymmetrical arms, the movement is the exact same. Now onto the lion's head, there's an arm on the back allowing it to swivel and move about. This will allow you to adjust it when you use it as a shield. And coming to the body, it has excellent body articulation, split up from the upper chest and the lower torso, allowing it to have a really good back extension and ab crunch. Each section having its own joint gives it excellent mobility. I mean, look at this excessive side bend. The chest is also able to rotate slightly, as can the midsection. For the waist unit, the only thing that moves is this, and with the sword on, that's not happening on that side, but it's able to move up and down this far. Now coming down to the lower bodies, we got a very good split. You would not be able to pull this off if the sword was attached though. We got an upper leg rotation, can't 360 because of the design of the leg. The leg is also able to kick up this high, which is pretty good, and it could extend this far back, equally as good. The hip joint also allows the leg to move up and down slightly. As for knee bend, its range of motion is very good. Coming down to the ankle, this ankle armor over here is able to move up and down. As for the ankles, they have very good range of motion, being able to bend all the way up touching the ankle armor. In contrast, the ankle extension is decent, and the foot is able to pivot side to side slightly. And due to the design of the foot, it has a very limited range of motion rotating. The toe portion of the foot is able to bend up and down, and the middle part of the foot is able to bend almost 90 degrees. All in all, the articulation is very good. The range of motion and tightness of the joints allow it to hold up a variety of poses, such as this one. And though I did say the joints are tight, they are not to the point where it feels like it's going to break. Movement is still very smooth, so you don't have to worry about that. Next up, we got extra accessories, of which the most important ones are already on the kit. That being the sword and the lion's head. And we'll get to those in a bit. Just want to get through the smaller accessories first. Firstly, we got three sets of hand options. A pair of open hands. A pair of holding hands, which is pretty much only for the sword. And we got a pair of clenched fists, which are already on the kit. The hand options are well molded, and they're nice to have. Next up, we got a variety of extra pieces. First here is the shoulder pauldron, which fits on the left side, giving you an option to interchange them if you want. Also got this adapter piece, which is for the line shield, if you want to put it on the left shoulder. And if you don't want a peg sticking out, you still have this piece to cover it up. Next up, we got the claw, but this time it has a peg on it, allowing you to equip the lion's head to act as a shield. And I'll show you how to do that later on. Lastly, we got some white pieces for the waist unit. So you're given two pairs, one that's smooth, and then one that has a peg on it, allowing you to holster the sword on either side. And speaking of swords, finally we're moving on to the weapons. We have the sword here in its scabbard, I'm not sure what the actual name of it is. If you know what it's called, leave a comment below and let me know what it is. The scabbard is pretty plain in design, but still looks pretty good. And when you unsheath it, the sword is in this nice clear green plastic, with a chrome sticker in the center. Looks decent, but I just do not like the yellow. I gotta paint it one day. The jewel on the hilt of the sword looks pretty good as well, sticking out. Overall, I like the design of the sword, I just don't like the color they use. And as the sword stands, it's pretty much three quarters of the model kit itself. To equip it, you're gonna need the holding hands, just slide out the fingers, but attach the sword, and then just slide the fingers back on. And be careful when you reattach the hand, it's very tight. I would say that the hand connection is fairly solid, but if you tilt the wrist too much, the hand will pop off. Though the sword looks pretty good, seeing that yellow just doesn't fit with the kit. Now lastly, we got the lion head shield, and I say it's a shield because you can actually put it on the wrist. And you can see that the shoulder connection for the lion's head isn't that strong. And to turn it into a shield, pop this adapter piece off. Now use this little shoulder piece to cover up that part of the shoulder. And you're going to want to remove this blade part, replacing it with the one for the peg, and just connect it to the back of the shield, and reattach the whole thing on the forearm. You can rotate it however you want, I prefer the lion head sticking down, but there you go. Nice utilization of the head, having your face as the shield is, I guess, not too bad. You also may be wondering that this kit has no long range weaponry, but if you rotate the shield around, you got two dual cannon blaster thingies. So the shield actually has a multi-purpose for it. Pretty cool. And here it is with the shield and sword together, giving it a very stoic look. And unlike the sword, I actually like the colors for the lion head. It's a nice design with colored part separation and good details. Though we're done with all the weapons, we still have one more extra left. If you want to put on an action base, you are given an action base adapter. Just let out the piece over here covering the hole, 
and then just slot in the adapter. Next up you're going to need another adapter, this one usually comes with action bases, and you can just slide it in right over here. Now get yourself an action base, I'm using the action base one. And there you have it, put in a nice dynamic pose, and it looks pretty freaking cool. And that's it for extras and accessories. Though it looks like they give you a lot of accessories you'll never use, I do like how they allow you to position the weapons on either side. Might be a small aspect, but it's nice to have options. And aside from that, whether you put it on an action base or on the ground, any pose you have with a sword and shield looks amazing. And if you're wondering how solid it is, shake test. The lion head falling off was predictable. And also, in post-production, I just realized I didn't attach the sheath, but that would have flew off a thousand percent anyways. Otherwise, majority of the kit is very solid, and remains so even being built after a couple weeks old. Unlike the Optimus Prime. Now, if you're curious how big this kit is, it's around 8 inches, or 20.32 centimeters. And as for size comparison, here it is next to the Entry Grade Arc 72, Master Grade Arc 72, and you can see the Leo Prime is around a head shorter. Next up, we got the figure at Standard Magnumon. And the LBX Nemesis. Then we got Haro, Doraemon, DK, a high and massive amount Eagle One box, some protein, and an ST Death Scythe Hell. As for shelf presence, being close to a master grade size, and probably because it's surrounded by Gundams, it does a pretty good job standing out. Now here we are at the end. What are my final thoughts on the kit? So pretty much, I absolutely love it. Though by no means is it perfect. The sheath falling around is quite annoying, some parts are either too stiff or too loose. The cloak, though looking very unique and cool, can fall off, and it is kind of tricky to re-equip it. And as I've shown previously, be careful with how the threads are, you don't want to hook onto it and damage the cloak. The yellow and metallic looking colors are lacking, you could fix that with a paint job, but out of the box, they don't look that great. Otherwise, I absolutely love the appearance of this kit. The organic and mechanical combination looks absolutely amazing. We got pretty good articulation and flexibility, so it can pull off some really dumb looking poses. Though you do not have a huge amount of extras and accessories, what you do have allows interchangeability and different forms of posing. Also, the weapons are pretty fun to play around with. I actually recommend this kit for beginners. It's very easy to build, but it's also quite expensive. But if you like the look of this kit, go ahead and pick it up. It's a pretty good kit. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope you like it. I enjoy making it. Let me know what you think. I would like to review other Transformers kits, but they're very expensive and their build quality isn't that great, so I don't want to deal with it. But never say never. Something cool might pop up in the future and I'll just probably pick it up. Oh. Yes. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye.